So the operation is undergoing. We are conducting extensive widespread operations against Hamas's infrastructure, its leadership, its operational command capabilities, the terrorist infrastructure that enabled the terrorist attack. And as you rightly pointed out, we took out one of the leaders who led the force that penetrated Israeli's border. Um, his name is Ali Qadi. And uh, indeed, they should all know from the mastermind of the massacre, Yehya Sinwar, right at the top, all the way down to the individual terrorists that conducted this massacre, we will not cease until we take, their, take them. This is a very delicate operation. Um, you've recovered bodies of some of the hostages. Can you give us more detail how many bodies were recovered and how the operation will try to find any other hostages? So I can't go into specific details. There's a lot of sensitivity behind this, obviously. There are still families and people that are unaccounted for in the aftermath of this terrible massacre. And that's still one week after they came into our houses and butchered babies in their bedrooms. So I won't go into specifics, but yes, we are operating in the area of vicinity, close to the fence, close to the border area, with uh, small uh, uh, operations in order to localize, find, and uh, try to identify people that were abducted to the Gaza Strip and bring them home. That is our operation. That is what we're doing. You know, Hamas are currently, I think, in a state of disarray as our operations increase. And we are doing everything now to be prepared for a potential ground operation. And that will mean that we have recruited some 300,000 reservists and we are taking all the necessary pre uh, precautions in order to be prepared on the Gaza front, but not only on the Gaza front, because there is also concern of the front on Lebanon with Hezbollah constantly uh, con uh, conducting terrorist attacks against our uh, against forces at the border, including uh, earlier today, um, uh, at an attempted infiltration that we intercepted and took the, took the terrorists out. Yeah, so there's a lot of... Sorry, about that cross-border shelling, uh, Reuters cameraman Issam Abdallah killed uh, in that cross-border shelling. After that, we heard uh, the Israeli army say it was very sorry for his death. Was that a tantamount to uh, saying it was a, um, responsible for his uh, death? No, absolutely not. The situation on the ground, we're still looking into the spe specifics of this incident, but the whole area, there is a combat zone. We've had exchanges of fire. We've had rockets, anti-tank guided missiles fired at our forces. We've had mortar fire. We've had sniper shooting. We've had shots. So there's, it's a very volatile area, and we are responding. So we will have to look into the incident itself. And when we have something to say, if it was us, we will announce that, as, of course. Peter, also on the set with me is our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. He'd like to ask you a question. Yes, yeah, sir. What more can you tell us at this hour about the reports that um, Israel has agreed to enable what it's called the exit through the Rafah border crossing with Egypt of pre-coordinated foreign nationals? Um, who would this agreement apply to? And can you confirm it's one way for foreigners to be able to leave Gaza and enter Egypt? Hi, Douglas. I can't confirm that that's actually happening. I know there is discussions about this, but I can't confirm that it's actually happening today. So in other words, you don't know for sure whether or not an agreement has been reached for that sort of one-way exiting of foreign nationals and to whom it might apply. We had heard possibly only Americans. That's right. I can't confirm any of that. Uh, Peter, um, less than an hour ago, we heard a statement from the Israel military uh, say that um, Gaza City residents must not delay evacuation. Any idea what that, that portends as to what's next? Well, of course, we are escalating our offensive against Hamas, and we are trying to mitigate the civilian strife. And, we're, uh, and that is why we're instructing people in the area of our operations to go south to move beyond Wadi Gaza so that they are out of or in a safer area uh, and away from Hamas's heart of operations, its bastion of, of barbarism. So I think that that's what we're, we're trying to do, is trying to differentiate be, put between the civilians and Hamas, the terrorist organization that has failed Gaza and the people of Gaza miserably. And as you move forward with that operation, what precautions would be made to limit civilian casualties? Well, of course, our operations are conducted within the realm of the laws of armed conflict. We are operating against a ruthless enemy that does everything to maximize civilian uh, casualties, we, on the other hand, do everything feasibly possible, known to military officials, military specialists, military professionals, in order to limit civilian casualties. And just 
One of those issues, like distributing pamphlets, distributing text messages, making announcements, um, dropping pamphlets from the sky so that it's widespread, and of course, utilizing uh, traditional media and social media so that people know that we're coming. And if you're not affiliated with Hamas, and if you're not a terrorist, then you have nothing to be worried about. Uh, Peter, Doug Herbert, again, uh, we have tens of thousands of Gazans at this hour uh, said to be moving from north, northern Gaza towards the south on the uh, the IDF's uh, orders. And I am curious, there is food waiting, food supplies waiting in Egypt near the Rafah crossing. Under what conditions will Israel allow that food to enter uh, Gaza, presumably uh, for the civilians who are arriving in the southern sector of Gaza? And Doug, my role as the IDF spokesperson, we talk about the IDF, the military operation. Um, I talk about the defense issues. Let's leave the diplomacy for the, di for the diplomats. Um, I understand the interest in this issue, but it's just beyond my realm of responsibility. Absolutely, the need is that people move south, uh, ad adhere, and, and, and I, I was actually happy to see the, your report that people are listening to us, and that's despite Hamas telling them not to evacuate the situation putting them at risk once again, sacrificing the people of Gaza. The, the, the Palestinian health ministry overnight said another 320 people were killed in Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. Reports this Saturday that some of the ambulances evacuating victims from buildings were struck by more Israeli airstrikes. Could you respond to that? That's the, the, the Hamas ministry of health? The Palestinian health officials. So Hamas, they're in control of everything's coming out. I'm very cautious of anything, any announcement that Hamas says. Um, I don't know, uh, would not really relate to anything and definitely not believe these are people that massacre people, babies in their bedrooms. So I would really, you know, we have to operate in a way that mitigates and limits civilian casualties. Uh, contrary to what they do, they don't care about human life, Israeli or Palestinian. And so our efforts currently are in order to conduct our operations destroy Hamas's capabilities, destroy their terrorist infrastructure, take out, you know, one of the things that we've uh, targeted over the last couple of days is um, drones that they positioned on the rooftops of houses. They don't care who is in the second floor, third floor, first floor of those houses. They put the drones on the, ha on the, on the top of the house in, and, and, and fill them with explosives so that they can penetrate Israeli airspace and go over and drop bombs on Israeli forces and civilians as they did just one week ago on Saturday uh, in that terrible, horrific massacre of, his, of Israeli families. So we are currently involved, in, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard that the updated number of around 1,300 people that were killed and butchered in this, this operation, this terrorist attack against our people. And indeed, when we look at this, and, and we're following the situation as over 120 <coughs> Um, people abducted into Israel, there's a lot of concern that, that is ongoing. We are fighting against Hamas. We will defeat them and we will destroy their capabilities. Yeah, and as of now, it seems like you're fighting against Hamas. Hezbollah had said when the time is comes for any action, we will carry it out. It seems like this conflict uh, will widen. If Hezbollah enters this conflict wholeheartedly, how much will that stretch Israel, uh, the capabilities of Israel's military? So first of all, I'd say to Hezbollah, look at what we're doing to Hamas in Gaza as we speak. Think very carefully if that is what the type of scenario you want. And, second, and secondly, I would say the, re the reality on the ground is we have recruited some 300,000 reservists. Many of those are reinforcing our frontier with Hezbollah on, on the border with Lebanon. And we are prepared for any eventuality. We have uh, the operational capability, we have uh, Air Force capability, naval capabilities, and yes, we are prepared for that. We don't want it, but we need to be prepared. And as we've seen, even over the, over the night with a, uh, an attempted infiltration, there are, there are some challenges that are developing. We hope that won't, be, won't happen, but as we say in the military, hope is not a method. Uh, Peter, we're also just wondering about, uh, you know, the, the, the links with Iran and we're in the next week of this conflict. We're wondering about the, where this goes, if it does broaden the, the, the conflict, Hezbollah, uh, Iran. What's the strategy uh, if there are links between Iran and Hamas? Well, there obviously are links between 
Hamas and Iran. They celebrate their relationship. Uh, Iran funds uh, Hamas, Iran trains Hamas, Iran gives them uh, uh, operational capabilities. Um, so there is obviously a connection. I think the biggest question is, were they involved in the decision-making process of this massacre in Israel? Um, that will have to be investigated. Investigated. I can't comment on that at this time, but we will have to get to the bottom of, of this. Uh, we are currently focused on Hamas. Uh, on removing this threat, they can't be permitted to govern the Gaza Strip as a staging ground for butchering Israelis.